So, all of time and space, everything that ever happened or ever will, where do you want to start? Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. Now we're watching and discussing every episode of the revived series. And quite frankly, it's, it's about time. time. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. We've had a few weeks of break, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but for listeners, it's going straight on from our previous episode. So last week, we said goodbye to David Tennant. Oh, squish, squish. And this week, we've said hello to Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you judging him from one episode? I'm judging him from all the aspects I've seen of him in this series so far. Yeah. And the one, and the little snippet I saw last time. Yeah, ignore the no, little snippet from I'm last time. I'm allowed to, the yeah. little snippet's in there, so it's canon. Yeah, I'm saying it's canon, but I'm just saying it's not a big... I'm not ignoring it. It's not a good representation. Don't tell me please. to ignore it then. Okay. By the way, this is our first episode of November. So just as we start the 11th month, we come on to the 11th Doctor. Somebody would have thought he planned that. <laughs> I didn't. It's just a nice coincidence. But yes, we have watched the 11th hour. We've begun the Moffat era. Um, ben did turn to me halfway through it and say, he put his hood up, he's got a hoodie on and he put his hood up and drew it tight around him and he went, I don't like it. Feels like a completely different show. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Okay, okay. Currently. But you, you hated Rose when you watched it and the yeah, end of I the world. I still hate Rose. Yeah, and so it, it evolved from there. So, you know, mm. give it a this chance. This just feels like... The cinematography and like the angles and like all this type of stuff that it's doing with the show feels odd and feels very different. Mm. Like Stephen said before we watched the episode was that this was going to be, this is like a reset -y yeah series. And like, you can tell that it's a bit like Harry Potter, like uh, that's the Haven Tennant Sonic Screwdriver. You can't use it because you didn't blow up. Do you want to translate that? Basically, you can't use other Doctor's wands. Yeah. But I think they like to redesign the Sonic Screwdriver with each Doctor because it's a, another toy to sell. More merch. And they can put a bit of personality yeah. for each Doctor in it. Yeah. But, yeah. but okay, right. So I'm getting negative vibes, which is a bit of a disappointment, I have to say. Um, but can we can we say something positive about it? Uh, Jeff was hot. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I didn't think he'd be your type. No. Um... Yes, he is quite hot, but I think Rory is more attractive, in my opinion. Yeah. And Matt Smith. Taste. No, Matt Smith. Matt, Matt, Matt Smith at the bottom of my list. Oh, moment. no, he's cute. He's cute. So I just feel like it's like, it's just the camera angle. Like, it feels like he's trying to put a joke in, like, nearly every line. Oh, that's Moffat for you. He's he was he's a sitcom writer. And it feels like every, every time he's, like, trying to make me laugh. Yeah. And it felt like, it felt humorous, not serious. Yeah. Even when we were getting to the big crux of this episode. Yeah. Well, I guess they wanted to make this quite a lighthearted episode, like... A bit like start off. when they were when Donna and Doctor were running around each other. Exactly, yeah. But that was done better. Yeah. But um, did you not get that sense with Moffat's previous episodes that he was trying to be funny and make you laugh and be clever and all that? Because I feel that in all his episodes. Um... You can know. always tell his voice, isn't it? I was just like, this is my personal opinion, and I think you've said this on the podcast before. There was absolutely no need for Amy to be in a skimpy, I won't say slutty, I'll say skimpy. Yeah. In a skimpy outfit. Yeah. Like, there was no need for her short, her skirt. I knew she wasn't a real police officer by because the, the level skirt. of her, by her yes, skirt. Yes. And wearing like almost fishnets. I'm like, so what, as soon as you saw her, you thought she wasn't a real I was police like, I was like, she, no, I was like, I didn't believe her. Fair enough. She is good. I do like her. She and, is good. And I do, I did, I loved how good they got the younger her to her. Yes. That was a good, that was a good. It's a good casting. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, are they related? They are. She's her cousin. Oh, that makes <laughs> a lot of sense now. <laughs> because they look good. They look like they could be, that it gen could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was very good. Very lucky that they were able to Is get that. Karen Gillan actually, um, I was going to call her German then. Um, Scottish. Scottish. Yes, she is, yeah. 
And when she was on the phone as a policewoman, that was her putting an English accent on. I know. Do you know, I feel stupid, but the first few times I watched this, um, I never even noticed she was putting on an English accent, but she is. Yeah. She's trying to pretend she's not the same person. And why did she change her name from a- a- Amelia to Amy? Um, I think it's because the doctor said that he liked the name. It was like a name in a fairy tale. And then since she she was trying to grow up and put all that behind her. Yeah. But do, can you not see what I mean by the camera angles? Uh, what do you and mean like, by camera angles? Like the, like the zooming about and the, okay, okay, and like the he's very twirly. Yes, he is very twirly. He's a bit like me. Yes, he is. He's he a is. bit like me. But can we? I think you you're talking about the bit where on the green where the, it's that going bit I did where not it's going like. sh- sh- around all the people. I hate that bit as well. Yeah, I no, wish that wasn't. It's in it. more than that. It's like. Some of the bit the... when you said you didn't like it was when she was looking at the apple when his tie was in the car door and then there was this lens flare and this blue wash went across the screen and you were like yeah it's, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of things which I just feel like just added in I don't know yeah. they're trying to make it a very different show to what it was mm. with this series yeah what I will say this is I like her you like Amy I do yeah but she's no Donna no. No, this she, is the thing. She is good. She's very different. She's mm-hmm. younger. She's very different. Yeah. And I just hope that there is no romance between the Doctor and Raw. No, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. But the Doctor and Amy. Yeah. Because my personal opinion is the reason why Series 4 was so good. Because there was no romance. It, because it cut that. Okay. It was, that was, it made the show messy. Yeah. And I have a theory it's going to make the show messy again. Because if you look at the time when he was carving, his tie was in the car door, there was a moment. Was there? Yeah, like his hand was on her wrist and they were looking very intently in each other and they were very close. I don't think it was romantic. Yes, it was. No, it was just her realising that it was all real. Yeah. Um, but did I, can I, can I just tell you this? That um, I guessed it correct. The wedding thing. Yeah. Yeah. When she said, can you get me back in time for tomorrow morning? Yeah, I just hope that she does not fuck this up. So who's she getting married to? Rory. You think? Yeah. Not Jeff? Not Jeff. Jeff's oh. gay. He's not gay. Jeff's gay. Why do you think he's gay? Jeff's gay. But he was. But he's gay in my head, so I have a chance. Okay. <laughs> but he was looking at porn on his laptop. That is the early 2000s, late 2000s for you. They weren't going to make him gay because it's the BBC and the BBC are homophobic. Yeah, but that's what's on screen. That's canon. He was no. looking at porn and the doctor said, get a girlfriend. If the, if Jeff was looking at gay porn, Fine. That wouldn't, he wouldn't Fine. have said that. Fine. Maybe he's bi. He can buy bisexual. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He is he's, most people say he's very hot. Yeah. I, I see it. I think he's attractive, but I prefer Matt Smith and Rory. Um, we saw Rory, or I did. We saw Arthur Darville, who plays him. Um, when we went to the West End to see a show, he was. I saw him walking in London. Did you? Yeah, and I said at the time, and you didn't know who oh, he was. Oh, is that the man who said, oh, he's in Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah, he was in Oklahoma at the time, yeah. Can he sing? Yeah. When the wind comes eating down the lane. <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah. One thing I wish wasn't in it, apart from the scene is the very first scene where he's in the TARDIS and it's like ricketing along and he's fallen out of it and everything. Uh, I wish I wish it just started with Amy's house, Amelia's house. No, I wish it just started with crashing the shed. Done. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then you jump to her bedroom. Done. That's exactly, you don't need to that's see what Matt I mean. Smith. Where it starts after the credit. Yeah, because then the first time you see him would be when he pops out over the TARDIS. Yeah, which that would make would be him amazing. a stronger entrance. Yeah, I don't know why they added that in. I think they were going to, look at our green screen. No, it's, it's amazing. Bit, it's a bit no, nice. it's not, babes. Yeah. Also, the TARDIS has obviously time travelled in between him falling out of it and it crashing in Amelia's garden because you can see the Millennium Dome and she's only like... However old she is, it would have been the 90s. So it wouldn't have been built. How old is she? So she's 19 in what we just saw. And then two years later, she's 21 when she's going off. She's supposed to be 21. Is she doing anything big at the moment? Well, she was just in Douglas's Cancel for ITV. Um, I don't know about movies. I know I she's done... I that's big. Okay, sorry. Um, I mean big is Hollywood. Yeah, I'm sure she is. I'm just, I don't follow it necessarily. Because she just played Nebula. That A long time ago. ago now, yeah. And yeah. Jumanji. 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 I want 
a reboot of Jumanji. Do you? But not... Video game. Not the video game version. I want the board game. I want a 90s board game version again. And I want a TV, eight-part TV show. Yeah. And, like, like more lore about the game. Okay. Like, who created it? Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Do you know what? That, I should just write these yeah, things. That whole story came from a picture book. Like, a very short, like, few pages long picture book. Did you know that? No. That's the origin of Jumanji was a picture book. Oh. Maybe, maybe there should be a TV series of Not Now Bernard. <laughs> Do you remember that? His parents keep saying, Not Now Bernard. Oh, yeah. Mom, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. monster. Not Now Bernard, and the monster eats him. Oh, yeah. Poor Bernard. Um, Where the Wild Things Are? Yeah. Isn't that a film? I believe so. I haven't seen it. Anyway, we're off on a tangent here. Um, New title sequence and theme tune. I don't think you liked it. No, I didn't. <laughs> was it the visuals or the theme that you didn't like, or both? Both. I I liked the other one. What had the one where it had? Do 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 do. That then went. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one just feels flat. Don't like the logo either. All oh, right. I do feel like this is the logo that at the peak of Doctor Who you saw everywhere. Depends this, how you define the, Depends how you define the peak of Doctor Who. Well, I, pe- I, I consider the peak of Doctor Who like like between 2010 and 2013. Well, that yeah, that's the logo that it was then. Because for me, that's when I was at university. And people and were obsessed with it. My roommates were quite obsessed with it. Yeah. My roommates were really obsessed with Sherlock. Yeah. And I, watched, I tried to watch one episode and I, halfway through I was like, this is not for me. And I walked no. out. Of yeah, room. it's a shame. I'd quite like to watch Sherlock with you. No, thanks. So my, that, that time of my life, I was a very big Glee fan. Okay. Very big. And I really wanted to see them live and I couldn't. Because at that point in my life, I was scared of London and going on my own because no yeah. one else wanted to go with yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So, yeah, it is, it is a very different feel and a different vibe. And I think Moffat's priorities as a storyteller are very different to Russell C. Davies. Um, yeah. Because Russell's characters are very like grounded in reality mm. or they were in his first era anyway let's not talk about the current era um and like particularly rose in series one council estate worked in that shop mm. and lived with her mum like that was so realistic it was like it'd come out of real life and she stepped out of real life on into the tardis mm. and then it maybe got slightly less so as the era went on mm. but the moffat moffat's companions are less gritty real life type people and more Characters. characters yeah like and it's, it's okay it doesn't mean there's not necessarily a bad thing it just depends what you want to watch but um yeah yeah and it's very fairy t- this series series five is very fairy tale vibe that whole you know i think it's great the opening like she lives in the countryside it's very like you know there's a village um everyone knows everyone yeah and she comes out of the house um in her little nighty and her welly boots yeah is her aunt dead what in the current time present yeah. day uh that's up to you i don't know can't can't answer that at the moment because i think she's dead okay she what about is. her parents parents are dead she said she, she doesn't have a mum and dad they're dead how did they die then i don't know eaten by a werewolf? trampled by an angry rhinoceros trampled by the tardis maybe they're in the shed having hanky panky and they <laughs> on them. so she lives with aunt sharon is that her name that's what she said yeah aunt shazza Thoughts on the food scene where he's mm-hmm. trying various foods. What a waste of food. I know. <laughs> oh, you segued into this because you want to tell everyone. I've tried a custard and fish finger sandwich and it is actually all right. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak like that. I'm actually hoping that you'll try it with me. Fish fingers and custard. That would have to be a Patreon exclusive. I think it may be. I think we may do it for an exclusive. Because, yeah, it would just be fun. But, yeah, if the scene is a bit... Sometimes with Doctor Who, I find you can be watching it one minute and it's like, it's the most profound thing you've ever watched. And then two seconds later, it's like childish yeah. drivel with him spitting all the beans down the sink and everything. It's a bit disgusting. Yeah. So as with Russell C. Davies would always find a way to make jokes about the Welsh, Moffat will always find a way to make jokes about the Scottish. So when they're looking for what he can eat, he says to her, you're Scottish, fry something. Do the Scottish like frying things? Well, stereotypically, yes. Oh. Like deep fried Mars bars. 
Oh, I thought the English like frying things as well. well we I'm have, sure they we do. Have an English fry up. But yes, this is not the last time you will hear jokes about Scottish people from Moffat. Oh. Sausage people? Scottish people! Oh. Um, the return I wish, of the sausages. I wish I wish I was Scottish. Why? Or Welsh. It's because you had an ac- wish you had an accent. Cool accent. Yeah, but some people in Scotland might hear you and think you do have a cool accent. No, I don't. Anyway, another thing is that Matt Smith is so good at acting with kids. He, like, performs really well with kids and, like, brings out a good performance with them. Yeah. He made... I think he made her feel safe. Yeah. And um, that's, that's the thing. Like, making her feel safe as an actor in the mm. scene made mm. her give a very, very, very good performance. Does yeah. she act still? I have no idea, if I'm honest. Amelia Gibbons. Caitlin right? Blackwood. Oh, not Gib... Gibbon. Gibbon. Gib, Gib, Gillen? Gillen. No, it's her cousin, so... Yeah. Could be on either side. Yeah. Um, I do. I did notice watching it this time. I've don't know if I've ever picked up on it before, but he, because um, he's freshly regenerated, he there was some moments where he was still talking a bit like David Tennant in the beginning scenes, oh. where he was like, "Must be yellow, a scary crack in your wall, and you have some cowboys in here." And then, then he got hit on the head with the cricket bat, and sort of it sort of re rejigged him. Yeah, and then he breathed out golden dust like he swallowed Tinkerbell. Mm. It's like. You're a puff, you're a puff. What? <laughs> and yeah, then you you uh, you clocked like quite soon when you saw little Amelia, you probably clocked that it was it was the new companion but young. Cuz you yeah. you said to me, "Oh, is it going to be like the time traveler's wife and he meets her as a girl?" Yeah. Do you remember another time Moffat's done that in Doctor Who? Blink? No. Don't know. The girl in the fireplace. He met Renette as a little girl and then he jumped forward and Renette met Madame de Pompadour. So he likes recycling ideas. No, he likes stealing off of Audrey Neffenegger. Yeah. But I think this is a cool way of introducing a companion. And like the implications of that, like the whole story about how he left her for 12 years and she was convinced it was real, but everyone was telling her that she imagined it. You know, what what that's done to her. Yeah, scarred her. Yeah, absolutely. And all those like dolls that she's made and like the pictures and stuff that she still has. She is... I don't know if she loves him. She's obsessed. Yeah. He was her childhood... Escape. Chance to escape. Yeah. A mundane and scary life. Yeah. But for this, like this modern day when she meets him, like she rationalised him as her childhood imaginary friend. And, yeah. and he's, suddenly he's come back. Yeah. Should we talk about Rory? Rory the nurse. Rory the nurse. Rory's a nurse in his scrub, scrub, scrubs. I love a man in scrubs. Do you? Why do you, why, why do you watch the TV show Scrubs then? Because I, I don't like it. But an attractive man okay. wearing hospital scrubs is like... Oh. You haven't even tried it. Scrubs. Oh, I've seen it. I saw it when I was a child. I didn't like it. It was oh. weird. Um, but yeah, I love Rory. Yeah. He's so he's so sweet. He's so... Um, I love a character who's like a real beta male and like he's quite shy and... I know. I would, I would just say that he wears his heart on his sleeve and he knows... Who he is and he's comfortable with who he is. I don't know. He's, he's not got much confidence, I think. Why are you handing me your phone? It's because... a camera too. <laughs> Very and 2010. The... the way the doctor was calling it a video phone as well. Like, it's just a phone. Yeah. We all know it has a camera on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I love Rory. Do you think we'll see him again? Yeah. Yeah. A bit like Mickey. Oh, no. No. What? No. What? I can't have this again. <laughs> dripping in, dripping out. Either drip in or drip out. Choose one. Well, we have to wait and see where it goes. Stephen. I'm not saying anything. Stephen, I'm not watching it if I'm having this in and out business and she's playing games with his heart. Oh my God. Stephen just, Stephen's face cannot un- tell me anything. I can tell everything from it. He raised his eyebrow. That means it's going to happen. That he, she's going to go off on this event, these adventures. In her night, he might I add. Mm. What a dirty little promiscuous. Promiscuous? <laughs> promiscuous, you mean? Promiscuous minx. Yes. Um, it's very, uh, I, th- I get a Peter Pan vibe from that, of her, like, leaving her house in her nighty and flying off. Oh, my God, the whole thing is, like, Peter Panny. Yeah, childhood imaginary friend sort of thing. And the boy who never goes up and yeah. he's never really grow he doesn't really grow up but he yeah. does sometimes but he doesn't really he can always become and he's flying he can make you fly mm. 
You can fly, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly. That's just a troubling movie, though. Yes. It's not very good. It's not aged very well. No, it hasn't. A lot of Disney hasn't. Um, Peter the Beast has. Yeah, but that's more recent. Hail as old as Ben. 32. Actually, it's 1991, October the 1st. 1991 one, 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 one. one Beauty and the Beast okay. It was the first ever right. Animated film I know what you're going to say Do you see G.I.? No, I was oh. not To be Nominated. Oh, nominated for, for an, an Academy Nom- Award. Award. <laughs> they use CGI in the ballroom scene. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Fun fact. In 2017, it was remade. In a live action film <laughs> with Emma Watson, but she cannot see <laughs> or act. She brought down the film, yet it still made one billion pounds in the box office. Did it? Yes, it did. <laughs> we also have Luke Evans. Please stop. Who is a homosexual? <laughs> Just like me and Stephen, he likes the D. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. This is what I have to put up with every In day. 2022. Is this a little mermaid? Do, 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 do. Me and Stephen. Went to see it on stage. Oh, yeah. And it felt a little mad. Yeah. It did. Gascon couldn't hit his nose. Neither can you, babes. <laughs> da, 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 da. Right, this has gone on far too long now. I need to stop now. Very nice. Clap, 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 clap. Okay. We'll see how much of that makes it in. None of it will. You never know. I might be generous. I'm be our it. guest. Be our guest. Right, moving on. Um, I do find it a bit annoying in Doctor Who when there's like some phrase that just keeps getting repeated, repeated. Like Geronimo! No, I was thinking of Prisoner Zero will vacate the human residence or the human residence will be incinerated, like on a loop. But I do like the double meaning there of the human residence because they think it means the house and then it turns out it means the planet. Yeah. Um, which is very Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, the eyeball. What about the eyeball? I will be honest, I thought the eyeball was a giant of some sort. When it was peering through the crack. But no, it turns to be like a mutated snowflake. That's their ship, I assume. No. Yeah, the Atraxi ship. No. What, you think that was the alien? Yes. No. Yes, it was the alien. It was their ship. No, it was the alien. Do you know how I know it was the alien? Because when you open the crack, the crack opened in the walls. Let's put it this way. The the wall spreaded its cheeks. <laughs> and we could see inside the wall. Yeah. And what? inside that wall, you could see cells. Yes. And then suddenly... A big eye. You see the eye. Yeah. So if, um, if the eye, if that was a ship, <laughs> why would the eye looking inside itself? No. No. That no, the cells, is... the cells weren't in the ship. Then I'm, that is the Atraxi then. Mm. Well, maybe they have a big eye, but they also, or their ship also has a big eye. You think that was just the alien, that just yes. big snowflake yes. thing? Oh, okay. I've never thought of it that way before. Yeah, no, it has to be. Okay. Interesting. Because the ship looks too organic. If they make it yeah. a ship, it looked, it looked very organic and very, like, no, it was a mutated snowflake. Yeah. Anyway, a nice little cameo from Annette Crosby. A bit of a waste of her, to be honest. I would have given her a better part. Yeah, but she's living too because she's in her 80s. Yeah, but she still sounds the same as she did in One Foot in the Grave. It's the Raggedy Doctor. All those cartoons you did when you were little. And she made Rory 
dress up as him and play games with her as a child. Is that Rory's nan as well? Is Jeff his brother? No, no, no. Jeff's just a random friend who also lives in the same village, and that was his gran. They're nothing to do with Rory. Don't you think that would have, that's a wasted opportunity? What? Like, making them related. Maybe. I wrote down a note about the duck pond. I was going to ask you about that, but my phone auto-corrected it to fuck pond. I love that, that it, I actually wanted to type duck and it just corrected it to fuck. <laughs> I obviously use that word a lot. I can attest. Yes, you do. Yes. So there was this duck pond, but it had no ducks in it. So why is it called a duck pond if it has no ducks in it? Because mm. ducks have been found there once, and that means it's a habitat for ducks. Mm. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's not duck, as in the animal. Maybe it's duck, as in you duck. And when mm. you're on the run from someone, you duck into a pond. Mm, maybe. And you mm-hmm. hide. Also, Olivia Coleman is in this episode. Yeah, what a waste. Again, yeah, it's so weird, because she's now obviously such a famous actress. and it feels weird to see her in such a tiny role. Such a tiny role. And the worst bit is watching it when they show the coma patients, and mm. she's one of them just lying there like an extra. And she's one of the people going, Doctor... You see that, you know she's going to have a, a more of a role in it because she's actually a proper actress. Do you know what Was I mean? that what you laughed at? Yeah. Oh. Because like, they wouldn't just have Olivia Coleman lying there. But obviously, mm. back in the day, she wasn't that known. I wonder how much she got paid for this scene. Mm. I like the bit when she's got the two girls like attached to her and they're talking out the wrong mouth. I'm assuming they're her daughters. Who? The woman the char- who's in the bed. Yeah, the woman would have been dreaming of her daughters yeah. and had them with her. Are they actually coma patients? Or because they said, how can eight people fall into a comatose? Or are they actually, were they comatose before the snake thing? Yeah, they were, they were coma patients anyway. Oh. And then the snake came and formed a bond with them. Prisoner Zero came and formed a bond with them. But yeah, she, she's taunting the doctor at the end there about um, the doctor in the TARDIS doesn't know, doesn't know about the cracks in the universe. <sighs> and she said silence will fall. From what? Something to think about. Silence has to fall from somewhere, and where is it falling from? No, silence will fall. Just if silence falls, it means it becomes silent. Um, do you know what made me so happy? After this episode finished, and I was setting up the laptop and the microphones. Don't you dare tell anyone. <laughs> ben started going. Dun 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 dun. What is that? It's the music. What? What? Where is it from? This. I am the Doctor. Is that what it's called that soon? Yeah. And it's Matt Smith's theme. So you'll hear it a lot. <laughs> Trust Stephen to be like, I know what this track's called. Yeah. This and is... I know what part of the track they use. They use three minutes to six minutes, point yeah. nine. This is the one of the most famous, most well-known tracks in it. Um, and it gets used a lot for Matt Smith. Um, how, many, how many series does Matt Smith do? I'm not telling you. You have to wait and see. He does four, doesn't he? You'll have to wait and see. I can just Google it, Stephen. Perhaps he does an Eccleston and he does one. <gasps> does he? You have to wait and see. I'm just going to Google it. No, please don't Google I it. I want to know. I'll just Spoilers. Google it. Spoilers. Spoilers. I can Google it if I want to. Spoilers. Please don't use that voice ever again. But yes, so that's a very, very good piece of music. And the way it sort of, it's teased throughout the episode, but then it comes into its full form once he gets his costume on and he's dealt with the Atraxi and sent them off. Yeah. And it's really good. And the best bit is when the projection of the Atraxi, they're looking at all the previous Doctors and it goes through them in sequence. Mm. And then it gets to Ted Tennant and then Matt Smith just steps through and it's like he's breaking open, like coming through the curtain, like, now it's me. Yeah. It's so good. So the new TARDIS, tell me what you think. Ugh, what an ugly piece of shit. You don't like it? No. I didn't think you would. I didn't think you would. No. It's Um, gone from, all right, to, okay... What junk can we find and build a set out of mm. it? I feel like they just went to a scrapyard and just like brought loads of junk and just threw it on TARDIS. Well, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it's an alien thing. Yeah. Why is it so English inside? With like the typewriter and... The typewriter and the hot and cold tap. Uh, was and... there a hot and cold tap? There was hot and cold oh. tap. And the, the, that, that clock, like the one in Groundhog Day that flaps over. Yeah. yeah. It's very human-centric. Yeah, it is. And it just it feels is. like, yeah. okay, this is supposed to be an alien from outer space. Yeah. And yet it's, yeah, I just don't I do, know. I do get that vibe. It's very whimsical. I think there's, a, there's something on the console that's sort of got thing spikes sticking out of it that's spinning around going, and it's very sort of Willy Wonka's factory. 
esque. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. I think I prefer the the previous one. Mm. But yeah, this is funny. Now we've headed into this brand new era. It's like the podcast has reverted back to episode one, where you were just shitting on everything. So you went on a journey with RTD One. Maybe you'll go on a journey with Moffat. I thought they were going into Wilf's garden when we crashed into a shed. No. And I thought Wilf was going to pop out. Said, "I'm back again." No. Thank you for saving my life. No, it's a completely different show now. In some ways, I feel like they severed ties and this is a completely fresh new show, but there are certain things that carry over. So you'll see as the series goes on. Have you got any um, predictions or hopes for the series? Um, That Rory goes around with them. Yeah. Not just a one off. Yeah. I mean, you want him to join them full time. All three of them go off. Mm hmm. Because that will stop. Because then you can build a love triangle if you want to do that one. Mm. But I just think, like, it would, I don't know, it's, it can get a little bit boring for just them two. Yeah, I know and what I you mean. I just think to myself, bring a bit of difference. And we haven't had a true male companion. What about Jack? No, I wouldn't cast him. Why not? He was only in it, only in a few episodes. Fair enough. Okay, so we've come to the part of the episode where normally we would look at our big list and decide where it would go on the list, what number. But Ben and I have had a chat, and we've decided to revamp the way we do this. Um, actually, it was inspired by one of our patrons and listeners, Northerly, and she said that um, she thinks lists like that are quite hard to do, and generally she prefers a tier list. Um, and I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, actually, you know what, that might be better. So going forward, rather than putting putting them on a numbered list where we have to yeah. say this episode is better than that episode or whatever, we've divided all the episodes we've watched so far into five tiers. So it's basically like a five star rating system, but they've been given names as follows. So if we think an episode is fantastic and deserves five stars, it's going in the top notch category. Top notch. The next tier down, four stars, is called Squibbly Dibbly. Bang in the middle for three stars, we have Anywho. Anywho. Slightly under average, two stars. The category is called Puke. Puke, puke, puke. And right at the bottom with one star, of course, it had to be... Absolutely not. So we've got our five categories, our five tiers. The 11th hour is the first episode of the Moffat era. Now try and be generous. It's going in puke. Puke, puke, puke. No. Yeah, it's going to Two puke. stars. Yeah, it's going to puke. Aww. I'm so sad. It's going to puke, Stephen. Really? Okay, well, at, yes. least, at least it's not one star. At least it's not absolutely not. It was very close to being one Actually, star. Actually, to be fair, that kind of makes sense because puke, you've also got Rose in there, which you've had a very similar reaction to it. In fact, I would say your reaction to this was slightly better than Rose. But yeah, so puke for you. And for me... It's not my favourite season opener. Um, I think I prefer Smith and Jones and Partners in Crime. But I do think it's very strong, actually, for me. Um, I love I love the stuff with um, little Amy, little Amelia, where he meets her and all that fairy tale stuff. I love the stuff like at the end where he's getting on his costume and like he's coming into himself and everything. I just find in the middle, it sort of sags a bit and it's a bit like meh when they're just going around like with the green and when he puts the sonic screwdriver up in the air and makes the fire engine go off and stuff like that. I just, that middle section, I just find a bit, ugh. I'm going to put it in um, Squidly Diddly, which is four stars. Squidly Diddly. Very generous. I enjoy watching it, so I do hope um, the rest of Series 5 improves for you. I think first episodes are quite hard, actually, to get right. I think once we actually get into the flow of it, you might enjoy it more. Is this like the same amount of episodes? Blah, blah, blah. It's still 13 episodes, yeah. Until we get later and then it gets shorter, mm. not So in terms of like the structure of the series, for this series, he continued the same pattern as before. So three two-parters in the roughly the same place in the series. Um, but then he starts to play with that after that. For example, series six opens with a two-parter. And series nine is all two-parters. Um, before we move on, um, I have something for you. Oh, you hid him in my stuff. Yeah, because you were not going to go in there. Why has he got a mop? <laughs> and a... Is he a part of Fantasia? What's on his top? 
Affairs. Affairs, yeah. I knew that he has affairs. How did you know that? Because. Oh, because I mentioned when we went to the escape room. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got you an 11th Doctor Funko Pop to join our collection. How much does this cost you? Oh, not much. But, yeah, he can he can join our collection next to Eccleston, Rose and Tennant. But it's so sad that they didn't do any other. I know, there's no Martha and no Donna. Very sad. You should have got him in a box. It's quite hard to track down one, to be honest. Was it? There were some expensive ones I wasn't going to spend that money, and they had boxes. The fact that this was out of a box made it cheaper. So why has he got a mop? You have to wait and see. Why has he got a mop? That is an iconic look of his from one episode, but you have to wait and see. So the fez is not all the time? It's not part of his regular look, no. Why did the fez not have a little tassel like it should have? It should do, yeah. Whoever it just made looks that. Like, it just looks like... It looks like a red button on top of his head. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... So we're coming towards the end. Um, just before we finish, I wanted to share a couple of messages that we've been sent recently. This first one comes from David, uh, who messaged in on Twitter. Um, and David says, Hi, Stephen and Ben. I've just finished listening to your Torchwood Children of Earth episodes. I love your podcast and look forward to it every week. Torchwood is one of the only bits of Doctor Who my boyfriend will watch with me and enjoy. I'm interested to see if he'll still enjoy Series 4, which I love, though I accept it's too long. I realised at the end of your last ep, I should have written in, as I have a little story about Susan Brown, who played Bridget. Do you remember Bridget in Children of Earth? No. Bridget Spears, the um, oh. older lady. Yeah. Um, I worked with Susan early on in my career in BBC radio drama, and as you would expect, she was delightful. I couldn't resist asking her about her experience of Torchwood, and she told me doing Children of Earth was one of the most fun jobs she'd done. She explained that the darkness of the material meant that they were far less serious off-camera, so they found the lightness to balance out the bleak scenes they were performing. I remember her saying that the cabinet scenes were a lot of fun to film. So excited to hear your reaction to Doctor Who Series 5. I'm really intrigued to see what Ben will think of the very different direction the show enters. Well, be careful what you wish for, David, because this has been a painful episode. <laughs> It was a pukey, 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 ep. A pukey, 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 mm. pukey, ep. We did have someone comment um, on one of our episodes yesterday from series two, The Satan Pit, which was one of the low points for you. Yeah. Um, and uh, they commented and they said that um, not giving this episode a 10 out of 10 is genuinely offensive. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry if someone having a different opinion to you is offensive. <laughs> And Stephen told me that. Yeah, and you and were I like, was like, I don't really care. Ben doesn't care. I got offended on your behalf, but <laughs> yeah, like for me, like I, I don't mind. You that may episode. like lasagna. Yeah. Okay, let me put it this way. I like spicy food. You don't, Stephen. Yeah. Right. Yes, Correct. Yes. I'm not offended that you don't like spicy food. No, exactly. I just enjoy spicy food. Yeah. That makes sense. It does make sense. This is the thing. Like I, I, I very often disagree with your opinions on Doctor Who. But I don't say you're wrong for having those opinions. Anyway, this message comes from Noah, um, who sent us an email. And they said, Hello, Stephen and Ben. I hope you're doing well. I'm loving the pod. I just finished your rewatch of season four. I'm excited that Ben is starting to genuinely like the show. <laughs> that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> no. Um, ben, while I don't often agree with what you think about the show, I appreciate your passion and critical analysis. Your talent for predicting what might happen is truly impressive. I enjoy your thoughts on what should have happened and what could be. Genuinely think you would be a good idea, man, for the show. On top of that, your vehement defence of Stephen from the hell that is internet hate is admirable. Your love and dedication is truly wonderful to hear. Stephen, I appreciate your openness to critical conversation about something you love dearly. Your ability to disagree without getting upset and patience with Ben's criticism. I'd probably throw hands if someone told me they hated my favourite episodes. At least we can all agree that Human Nature, Family of Blood and Blink are top tier episodes. I admire your steadfast love for the show and for Ben. You two are lovely together and lovely to listen to. P.S. I love when you talk about the music. I enjoy analysis of thematic music. Light motifs and character themes are so my jam. I was wondering if you've heard of the band Chameleon Circuit. I never hear anyone talk about them. They made two albums largely based on the 10th and 11th Doctors. I find their songs enjoyable, but I think there was some problematic thing that happened with the lead singer. Would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for reading and for the brilliant pod. Can't wait for season five. Stay fantastic. Thank you, Noah. It's a lovely message. Um, Chameleon Circuit. One of the band members was Charlie... Angels? No. Um, is it O'Donnell or McDonnell? You know, the YouTuber. Oh, Charlie... Charlie, Charlie is so cool, like. Oh, Charlie is so cool, like. Oh. Yeah, Charlie McDonnell, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. 
so that's nice. But um, yeah, there was oh, some... Oh, Alex Day. Yeah, Alex Day. Something went wrong. He did something oh, yeah, weird, didn't like, he? I, I, still don't know. I still don't know much about no. his... Yeah. Yeah. I didn't listen to them much at the time, but I do remember one song that where they basically summed up the finale of this series, series so I won't go into it now, but um, that was quite fun. Um, yeah, lovely messages there. Thank you. We'll have some more next week. You know what it's time for now? I'm going to do a harmony over it. Well, I better put my fingers in my ears then. Okay. Patreon, 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 shout out, 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 in honour of the new addition to the theme tune for this era. If people want to know why I had to put fingers in my ears is because if Stephen started singing over me, I would drift into his melody. Yes, you can't hold a, your own part, yeah, if so to no. speak. <laughs> um, so uh, it's been a few weeks since we've recorded. Um, mm. So we actually have um, three new patrons <gasps> to welcome to the team. Welcome to the team, the team of only fat. <laughs> only fat. <laughs> welcome to the team, the team of... About time. I shudder to think what we'd be posting on OnlyFans. Should we call them timers? Timers. Timeliers. Timers. Maybe. I don't know. Anywho, so welcome Elijah. Elijah. Scott. Scott. And Tony. And Tony. So huge thank you to you guys. Welcome to the team. You join the wonderful ranks of, who shall I do? Matt Smith. You've got to do Matt Smith. I, I can't really do Matt Smith. He's a bit RP. Yeah, I can't. I yeah. Did he come from a rich background? I don't know. Was he in drama school when he got the role? No, he wasn't in drama school. No. Has did Matt Smith have, go to drama school? I think so. Do you think he went to Central? Let me find out. What do you want to know? I think it's either Central or yeah, Central or Rada. I was going to say Rada. Let me check. He went to the National Youth Theatre, which I was also a part of. Maybe you saw him. No, it would have been before me. Oh. Yes, a few years before me. It doesn't say on Wikipedia whether he went to... Did you know oh, Carrie Hope? he went to University of East Anglia studying drama and creative writing. Oh. So you didn't go to a drama school? No. Did you know that um, Carrie Hope Fletcher never went to drama school? Okay. You don't have to. It's not the only route into the profession. I know. She was Jane. Oh, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. Oh, no, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Sorry. And then she was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. As? Jemima. Jemima, yeah. Jemima Potts. And it sounds like a drag queen name somehow, doesn't it? Welcome to the stage, Jemima Potts. I'm not sure what the pun is, but it feels like there's one in there. Oh my God. Welcome to the stage, Jemima Song. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time to lip sync for your life, Jemima Song. Yes, I do. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Anywho, I was trying to do the Patreon list. Um, I will do, I will try my best Matt Smith, but it's not no. good. It's not good. I haven't tried it for ages. I love the name Jemima, by the way. Lovely. Okay. You join the wonderful ranks of Louisa. Louisa. Philip. Philip. Northerly. Northerly. Jason. Jason. Tom. Tom. Louis. T Louis. Michael. Michael. Heather. Heather. Benny. Benny. Caleb. Caleb. Monica. Monica. Amber. Amber. Jess. Jess. Kaylee. Kaylee. Kieran. Kieran. Jay. Jay. Owen. Owen. Natalie. Natalie. Imogen. Imogen. Sarah. Sarah. Aaron. Aaron. Jake. Jake. Matt. Matt. Ryan. Ryan. Janie. Yes, Janie. And Ryan. And Ryan. So yes, apologies for that terrible attempt at a Matt Smith impression. There's okay. a guy who started on YouTube called Jake Jacob Dubman. He was, I don't know, a teenager and he uploaded himself doing a Matt Smith impression and it is flawless. And it's got him work with Big Finish, like, because, like, if Matt Smith isn't available to do an audio, they'll get him. Oh. Crazy. That's what you do if you can just do one voice. I know. Well, they should voice. get me, if Alex Kingston's not available, they should get me in for River. Do it again. Spoilers. She's your Caroline voice. Hello, Doctor. You use a bit of it for your Caroline Similar, voice. yes. Anyway, people don't know who Caroline is. She's my boss at work. <laughs> 
she's so she said the most weird thing to me the other day i was sitting in a in the school office um doing something and she came in and she went oh Stephen, finally some glamour in the office it's like I, what the fuck is that I supposed to mean get it. i don't get it i'm sure she won't listen to this so yeah all right anywho so this was an interesting episode i, I really hope it improves for you um I, I think it will the next episode is the beast below Oh, not the squibbly dibbly thing down the drain again. Oh no, it's nothing you've seen before. But it's called The Beast Below, um, and we shall see what you make of that next week. But until next time... Stay cool! Stay safe! Stay Stay fantastic. fantastic!